Hi, I'm Patrick Dean. Welcome to my farm, New Leaf Farm. My wife and I have been living here since uh, the summer of 2019 when we were pleased to move back to Kingston. It's a great place to live. It's, it's been a special consolation during these uh, COVID months. When we moved here, we didn't think we would get to know it quite as intimately as we have, uh, working from home. Um, in some ways, the country life has been a real consolation and helped me keep uh, work issues and some of the challenges of COVID in perspective. So the day begins with uh, dog walking, so at about quarter to six, I come out with the dog. Is a frisbee girl. She, li she likes to play frisbee. And uh, over there, actually, she codes sheep very effectively. And Katie has no interest in sheep at all, which is a little anomalous for a breed. Yeah. Yeah. This is Kate. Uh, that's Toby. Um, the eldest of the five dogs is Jill. And then the two pups are Jim, Jimmy, and Ben. Jimmy is named after Jimmy Perez in the TV series Shetland, the Scottish mm -hmm. detective. Um, ben is so-called because he was the biggest of the pups, so he's Big Ben. And, uh, they, uh, they're a nice group. Um, so we were a city family until my daughter was seven, and she, uh, she got a pony. We got her a pony, I should say. And uh, we carried on living that way until it became obvious that it just wasn't economical. So we thought, well, we'd uh, get a farm and keep the pony with us and any other animals we had acquired by then. So that was about 20 years ago. And we've been hobby farmers ever since. Uh, and this would be the fourth farm we've had um, with all the moving we've done for university. Uh, this is the most productive in a way. So now, Sheila runs a sort of a fiber operation here, and she sells off the fleece and fibers from the sheep uh, and the goats. They're nice to be around these animals, and we we, we uh, enjoy letting them live out a natural lifespan here. And, uh, uh, it's a very nice, productive uh, arrangement for the animals, uh, and also for us. But it's very really relaxing. So after 20 years, I don't think I could live in the city. This is it's now uh, sort of part of my sense of who I am and how I want to live. So the girl in the blue sheet is uh, Mickey. So she would be, I think she's about 15 now, uh, easily 15. And uh, she's actually a northern dancer baby. So she's out of a pretty distinguished racehorse life, although she has not ever done any racing. Uh, and, um, and then the other one with her is her daughter, Hattie, who's uh, uh, she, they're Irish horses in type, the, the Irish draft, and Mickey Mickey is a bit of thoroughbred in there too. So um, they are lovely animals, and we've had both of these. In fact, Hattie was born in, in Kingston the last time we were here. She was born some 2008, I think, thereabouts. So, this is what remains of, at one time we had five horses, we're down to just these two now. Oh, really? Wow. They see the hairs being thrown, so. Hi guys. Hello. Why aren't you coming in, guys? Why are you hanging around? Yeah. Are you telling me about some hair? Yeah. You press it when they all come running
it was 28 sheep and goats. I don't know what the ratio yeah. of goats to sheep is, but that's the total number. We got our first sheep in um, uh, when we were at the old Kingston place before we went uh, to down to Hamilton. So that would be about 2008, 2009, we got our first Shetland sheep and, and Sheila's always been interested in spinning and weaving so the reason for getting the sheep was for the, the fibres and then uh, over the years, the nine years we were away, we added to the sheep flock so there are some interesting sheep here, they started out as mostly Shetlands but then there's some Gotland and Finn and blue-faced Leicesters mm -hmm. and then the goats are a new thing um, which we did as a rescue and uh, we rescued a group of goats only to discover that four of them were pregnant. So we then had all those goats plus their four babies all around the time we moved uh, here, um, not this past July, but the July before. So these two little brown guys are babies and that little girl over there with the pointy horns is, she's one of the babies. Hello, you. Yeah. So, shearing them, how often do do they need to be sheared? The, the sheep once a year, and we do it in the spring usually. Um, unless they've got a particularly heavy coat in the summer or something like that, but usually it's in the spring. So it'll be April or May. Uh, the goats uh, don't all yield fiber. Um, some of them are cashmere. I think most of the goats are cashmere. So they do yield fiber, which you have to comb off them. You don't actually shear the, the goats. You, you take it off them with something that looks like a, like a, one of those wire combs you'd use on a dog. Um, and it just sort of comes out and then you process it. Uh, I'm not the expert on this, but then you process it in the normal way you card it and stretch it and eventually you spin it i guess um so they all so in, in other words not everybody here yields a, a fleece and some of the rescue goats are just whether they'd be dairy goats or something like that but they just they just live here they don't they don't do anything to justify their being here other than just existing um but they're pretty good and they've settled in well you know i mean it's interesting they all live together quite comfortably and uh, the goats sort of dominate the sheep in an interesting way. Uh, goats, you know, this whole thing of the grass where it's greener on the other side of the fence is very true of these grazing animals and goats are always sticking their heads through the fence to get at the grass on the other side and for the most part are quite good at getting their heads out of the fence but sometimes they can't get them out and then you have to go and either help them extricate themselves or in some extreme cases which is not very often you have to cut the fence to get them loose. Tintin is an Icelandic sheep and he was a rescue uh, this spring. He was just a little lamb born in uh, April or May and he didn't have a home so we gave him a home and he lived for about a month and a half in the house with us uh, in our mudroom. How was that? Not well. It was very pleasant at the start when he was uh, a little, a little lamb. Once he began to approximate a full-grown sheep, it was not a good idea to have him in the house. So then we had to begin the process of integrating him out here with the other sheep and goats. And he's he's still not fully integrated. So though he's out with them all during the day, and he's out grazing with them at night, he comes into his own private bedroom, which is just. Uh, Sleep without being beaten up. Um, so he would, yeah, he, he's, he's maybe seven, seven or eight months, and uh, it's going, going concern looks good. The horn that has the black stripe on it is a replacement horn. He lost the original in an accident when he was little. <laughs> the hands are looking terrible because they're all molted, so oh. they're, they're, they're in between. Growing, getting rid of old feathers and, and growing new ones, so they're, they're not looking very good. Little
living uh, in the country uh, on a hobby farm. We've had, I think we're now on our fourth. There's a whole street. Um, we've, uh, uh, the, well, of course, it distracted me, and that's one of the reasons why country life is so fantastic because um, you move out here, you think it's going to be a whole lot of work, and indeed it is. But it's really good for the soul and for the mind. Uh, I find uh, increasingly over the 20 years we've been living uh, uh, on, on a farm, uh, my closeness to nature has uh, become a striking and important part of my life, and my sense of who I am. Um, and that's nature sort of writ large, right, from these creatures who are charming uh, and have lives parallel to our own here that are always interesting and uh, rewarding, but also the natural world uh, at large that I found really, really important during uh, these COVID months. It's been a challenging year, I think, for everybody. Um, and it's brought home to me the importance of uh, having a life that's full and balanced and not just all about work. Uh, there's a whole lot more to life, obviously, than just what we do nine to five, uh, whether we're doing it from home or whether we're actually going into the office. Um, some of the great consolations come from those things that fill out your life and actually make work that much more rewarding because you can situate work in a much larger context. For me, it's the context of human experience more important.